Hey everyone, welcome back to part 5 of the Beginner Scratch course. In the last episode, we worked on making a beetle that could be controlled by the arrow keys. And in this part, we're going to be building and turning it into an actual game. So let's add a sprite so that the beetle has something to chase. Let's click here, and let's choose apple. So in our game, we want the beetle to chase the apple around. First of all, I think in order for a beetle to be able to eat an apple, we have to make the apple a little bit smaller. So we can click right here and change this size from 100, which is 100%, so full size, to 50%. And so it's going to go to half size. You can see I can drag it around, and that seems like a better size. Now when we start the game by clicking the green flag, we want this apple to go to a random position on the screen. Luckily, in motion, we have a block for that. Go to random position. So you can see if I click the green flag, it's constantly going to different random positions. Now the player, who is the beetle, will have to chase the apple. So if I click the green flag a couple times, now my goal is to go and collect the apple. So let's make it so that when the beetle touches the apple, the apple goes to a new position. So the way to do that is to go into events, drag in a when flag is clicked, go to control, drag in an if, go into sensing, drag in a touching, and change this from mouse pointer to beetle, go into motion, and drag in a go to random position. So let's take a look at what this code does. It uses an if block to say that if I'm touching the beetle, then go to a random position. And this is coming from the apple sprite. And that's exactly what we want to happen. So let's see if this works. If I, as a beetle, go up and hit the sprite, you can see that nothing actually happens. And that's because this code is only run once. And that's when the flag is clicked. So it's only checking at the very start of the game if the apple is touching the beetle. But that's not what we want. We want it to always be checking and always be running this piece of code. We can go into control, drag in a forever, and you can now see that our game will work. If I go and hit the apple, it'll go to a new position. And this keeps happening for the rest of the game until I really just hit the stop button. So this is pretty fun, and I think the user will have a fun time playing our game, and so will you. But let's add a score. Let's make it so that our game keeps track of how many apples you've eaten. So there's a way to keep track of score. It's in something called a variable. So click on the variable block category, and let's make a new variable, and we will call it score. Hit OK, and you can see that we have a new variable called score. So what is a variable? So a variable is a type of memory in our game that holds a certain number or a certain word. So it holds some kind of information. So in this game, score is our game's memory for how many points our player has. So when the flag is clicked, we want to set our score to zero to restart. And every time it touches the beetle, we want to change our score by one, so just increase it. So now if I click the green flag and I chase around this apple, you can see that I'm gaining score and our game is working. And let's see if I can get to seven. So that's where I'm going to leave this episode off. We've turned our beetle from a sprite that could only move into a game where we chase the apples and we get score for doing so. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in part six where we continue to learn about Scratch.